All right, you Packer legends, something a bit different today due to social media requests. Um, I'm actually at work, but don't tune out because I'm not here to talk about work. I'm here to have a chat about that thing. So I'll give her a quick wash and we will get straight into it. I'm not 100% quite sure where to start this, so I'll just start by giving you a bit of a rundown of what the boat actually is. Outboard, that sort of stuff. But the boat is a five metre Quintrex Hornet, 2004 I believe the hull is. Um, outboard's also 2004, got a 90 Mercury four stroke salt water series. Haven't managed to blow it up yet, she's got a couple hundred hours on it. So. Oh, and when I say a couple of hundred hours, I actually mean 506. Solid. I guess it cruises along at about 70 k's an hour. Could probably get a bit more speed out of it, but 70 k's, you know, it's hard to complain with that out of a tinny. Mercury. Services. CJ Marine. Zane is a great guy. And he really does know his shit, so get around him. Next thing on the list is the rat, which is fairly fresh. It's only been on there, I don't know, a couple of months. The rat was designed and printed by Richard Potter, X Factor Science. He's done a bloody ripper job. I didn't have much of an idea of what I actually wanted. I sort of gave him a colour and some logos and said, get into it and come back with three or four options and that's what we ended up with. And in hindsight, I would like to point out that my ideas were pretty bad. Um, Richard was right, and he done a great job. We will just start at the front and move backwards, I think, because that's just how I'm doing it. Trolling motor, motor guide, XI3, 24 volt, 70 pound. So it has got more than enough power to move this boat round. You can hold yourself in some pretty bloody fast current if you need to. The one drama that I have had with it is the foot pedal. So there it is, the Bluetooth foot pedal. It is awesome and it is a nightmare all at the same time. It has sort of had bad connectivity issues. It just sort of went through a bit of a stage where it wouldn't connect or I had to connect it every time I used it. Then it would just disconnect, made a pain in the ass. That was my second foot pedal that did that. The first one just wouldn't turn one way. It just sort of died after six months or so. Yeah, so that's the third foot pedal I'm running now. And I haven't had any dramas, fingers crossed. Don't have any more dramas. All right, next up is the storage. I'll go through the hatches, what I've generally got in them. So, front little hatch. Don't keep much in there. Rope, trailer motor, foot pedal, and winch handle. Right, center hatch. Obviously, there is nothing in there. That's where I generally keep my life jackets, um, GoPro stuff, tackle bag of soft plastics. That's really it. That stays pretty empty. Generally, my non-boater stuff can go in there or whoever I'm fishing with for the day. As you can see, this is sort of my main big hatch. Houses my two trial motor batteries, keep some water in there. Uh, I've generally got a little jump start kit in there, which saved Stephen Pryke and ABT at Hobart. They are cheap insurance and Stephen ended up winning that round when I needed to give him a jump. So congratulations to you, my friend. Which I'm not gonna lie, the little jump starters saved me quite a few times. Just on this side, I usually keep the little jet boil and jumper. Got some wet weather pants I keep in there as well. And just my scales, that sort of thing. So you're probably thinking, where do I keep all my tackle? I actually have a Yeti loadout box, which most of my stuff stays in, so I can take it in and out of the boat quick. Um, yeah, and I just put that straight in front of the console which is just a little bit lower than the deck so you can still stand on it it's tough as nails it's waterproof 
one of the best things I brought. So the last storage area pretty much. I just put the rod locker in. I just really wanted somewhere that I could actually lay my rods while I was fishing, whether it be tournament fishing or just social fishing. I'll just lay them across the top there. It goes from all the way from the front right to the back. So there's plenty of room there. Right, to the cockpit. Not much exciting going on there. I've got the Elite TI, the original one. Um, it also says patience there because I do get a bit impatient at times. Got the live wall timer, um, RAM mount for my iPad, which I linked to the Lowrance, which I also mounted up front as well, as you've probably seen in my other videos. Got the AccuCull culling system, power pole controls, um, just a USB outlet to charge the GoPros or phone or whatever. Braid scissors, sunscreen, scent. Right, obviously I just mentioned the power bar controls, so we'll go straight to that. Um, I fish a lot of flat socially, shallow water type stuff. Um, there's nothing more exciting than sight fishing, so it's a no-brainer really. It's the best thing I've brought for the boat. Number one, the best. I purchased the power pole through Chris Hickson at Manning River Marine. Um, he was awesome to deal with. Got it to me fast. Just no issues. It's just what you want. All right, live wells. Very important for tournament fishing. I have the standard one that comes in the boat. I've got the cold tags there. Don't know what brand they are. I think they're just the ones that come with my Rapala touchscreen scales. And I also put in another live well. Yeah, so the second live well is good. Build it for ABT non-boaters and just if you catch a big bag, since our fish are bigger in Tassie than everywhere else. I really need to work on my English. Whew. All right, at the very back, there's not much going on because I've already been through power pole and the outboard. I've got my, there, transducer for the Lowrance. Um, Got the tie down stra straps which just stay with the trailer so they're nice convenient easy to use i don't know that's that's basically it really so as far as what i've done to the boat itself um after i bought it a couple of years ago is everything it was the ideal boat that i wanted it just wasn't set up for tournament fishing or really my style of fishing at all so I spent a lot of man hours and a lot of that that have gone into it. I guess lastly I should probably talk about what I want to do the boat in the future. There's not really that much left to do. I would love to upgrade the sounders at some point. I'm not sure what brand I'd go with but hard to justify the dollars. Um, but yeah it is what it is at the moment. One thing I did forget to point out earlier was just how goddamn stable this hull is. Can have two fairly sizable blokes standing on one side of the boat and it doesn't really move so for a tinny that is pretty impressive okay one last thing i promise it was stressed to me when i was getting a wrap that i'd need a travel cover because otherwise it would be trashed in a very short amount of time our roads down here are pretty shit, and yeah do a lot of driving on the gravel that is my tournament social vision boat in a nutshell I like to keep it all pretty simple. Um, just makes things easy when you're on the water. And if you made it through the video, thank you. See ya. Hit like, hit subscribe. Let me know in the comments what you want to see next. So let us know. Thanks guys.